Sunshine Wild Ones, it's Bernadette. I'm here with your Pick a Card Tarot reading for Monday, March 29th, 2021. Y'all, it's just a couple more days until my Kickstarter begins for the new book, Spirit Totem and Power Animals, the complete book of Animal Spirit Guides. It is the most comprehensive book anywhere in the world, at least that I could find, um, about the subject of Spirit Totem and Power Animals. It's 700 pages, um, all color inside and out. There are 300 animals each with two whole pages of information about them. You can take the most amazing deep dive into these animal medicines and energy. There's all kinds of tutorials, um, sample interpretations, how you make your own sigils and talisman, um, how you work with healing with the animal uh, guides, how you get a deeper relationship with them, numerology, color theory, anything you could ever need to know or want to know about working with animal spirits. I'm your girl. I'm your huckleberry. I did it for y'all. So um, please, 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 please mark your calendars for April 1st. Um, the link is below in the comments or will be below in the comments and um, make sure that you're on my newsletter list. Make sure you make sure you go to the forums, sign up for the forums, do the whole Megilla, but stay in the loop, right? You've got to have this book and I'm only offering it at the prices that I'm offering at um, during the Kickstarter. So um, there you go. So, okay, let's get to the reading. So today's reading is a little crazy because it's like, <laughs> it's like a buffet. It's like, okay, well, here are your choices for what this, um, for what this card and this animal mean for you and it's up to you to to interpolate what it what it means for you and so the dragonfly as the eight of wands has come for you all today it's a hugely um it's not even just that it's powerful it's just so multi-dimensional this reading so when you take a uh when you take a close look at what the um, eight of wands means, you know, for the traditional tarot card meaning, you'll notice that you've got eight wands and they're, um, you know, they're on a, on an inversion, on a slant. And that, when I see that, uh, I, that always stimulates me to be reminded of, of the magician card where the magician's like, you know, kind of like Saturday Night Live, there's one hand up and one hand pointed down. And that's all about bringing the power of God, the power of the heavens, the power of the divine, divine messages from here down to earth, you know, through mortal man. And um, now you got eight of those puppies and they're all growing leaves on them, which means it's all about life giving and life affirming and, um, you know, things that are going to be really abundant because they're fertilized, they're healthy, they're growing. So it, today's a really good day. Remember, today's root chakra day and the, uh, the ruling planet is the moon. That's the energy. So it's a really, really good day to start downloading messages because they're going to come really fast, really, really, really fast. That's also what this, uh, what the eight of wands tarot card is about. Are, are you moving fast? Um, you know, what you want should be moving fast. Your hope should be just like, wow, because, you know, listen, um, the Kabbalists call this card, the Lord of swiftness. So whatever journey you've been on, whatever it is that you've been waiting for or hoping for, it's coming to its conclusion. And the good news is you're probably going to arrive at that destination sooner than you think. Now, that said, the, um, the, you've got to be prepared for that, right? So it's like when you take a look at, uh, you know, the astrological meanings behind the Eight of Wands, it corresponds to Mercury in Sagittarius, which is aim high, hope for the best. And you just never mind the details. Just when you, you know, you let that arrow fly, you, you could even like, almost like once you're here and you let it fly, you could turn your head immediately and you're going to know that, that, that the arrow is going to hit its mark. So there's a huge call to optimism today, like a really huge call to optimism. And um, you don't have to know all the details. You set your intention, you've done the hard work, um, or you're about to do the hard work and you just, you know what? Your animal guides, your angels, whatever it is you believe in, it's just going to take care of the rest because you're going to take care of the rest. What that means is, you know, people talk a lot about let go and let God. I, I love that phrase. I do. And even though it's really associated, um, you know, with Christianity, I think it's perfectly uh, a beautiful thing to, to use for, for every, every faith and every, you know, belief, because, um, you know, in so many beliefs and so many faiths we're God is us and we are God, we're all one. And so when you, when you let go and let God, really what you're doing is you're letting go and you're letting yourself, which is awesome because that way you're not sending out the, you're not sending out the vibes of worry. You're not sending out the vibes of fear. You know, like for instance, over the weekend, um, man, Kickstarter kicked back my, um, they didn't approve my, uh, 
campaign for first at first because I I had on there that I was donating part of the part of the profits to charity. Well, I did that my last campaign, and you can't you, you're not allowed on Kickstarter to raise funds for a charity through the Kickstarter, but you are allowed to say that you're using the profits for it, which I did. And somebody didn't read. And I was like, <gasps> I was had a heart attack, y'all. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been advertising this for over a month. What am I going to do? So on and so forth. And then you know what? Spirit said, there's no way we're letting this campaign fail. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's going to do good for the planet. It's going to do good for animals. And if you don't start it on Kickstarter, you walk on over to Indiegogo. They'll be happy to have your money. And they are, they are a platform that raises money for charity. So I don't care what you do. I mean, they care what you do. You understand? And I was like, <sighs> and I was it. I calmed right down, you know, waiting a couple of days on Kickstarter and, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to see. So, um, that being said, there is, there is also a call with the eight of wands that when you hope, you hope big. And when you are that that thing that you believe in, that thing that you can count on, when, when you let go, then you, you know that your higher self is going to take care of everything. Well, here's what's interesting about that. So Dragonfly really wanted to be the Eight of Wands. I mean, even when I was just sitting around thinking about it, have you ever heard dragonflies when they buzz by you? They're like, vroom, vroom, vroom. I mean, you can hear them from a mile away. They're just, they kind of sound a little bit like hummingbirds, you know, the vroom, vroom, but not, they don't have that kind of shrill timber to their, to their beating wings. I don't know how to describe it. You'd have to know the sound that I'm talking about, but I could always tell when a dragonfly was anywhere near me because of the sound of their wings. So dragonfly wanted to be the eight of wands because one of the things about dragonflies that are, is so amazing is they can, scientists study the way they fly and they're often called the helicopter because they can fly backwards, forwards. Um, they can hover other, other there's, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, no other animal, no other flying thing can hover. Um, they can zig, they can zag, they can go Diagon Alley. And there isn't, you know, I think alien craft can do that. I do. I, I listen, I've been to Sedona. I, I've looked up with those, you know, um, the military grade night vision goggles where you can see way up in the sky and, oh, y'all, hey, I, and I'm only, listen, I'm, I'm not a channel about aliens, okay, but I don't see why aliens off, and off-world entities can't be spirit animals. I mean, they're probably animals and they, they may not be human and I don't know what their classification is, but for goodness sake, they're living beings. Why couldn't they be a spirit totem or power animal, right? Okay. And I know that I know that I know that I know a bunch of y'all have had um, alien experiences because I got umpteen gajillion D emails um, and private messages from that reading that came through that was just off the charts uh, a few weeks ago where I was like, well, I just got to tell them the truth. Here's what I'm seeing. Anyway, I go through all of that because um, there is uh, Stephen Greer. Uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Greer has a special on Y'all, I don't remember if I saw it on Netflix or I saw it on um, Amazon Prime, but it's called, um, hmm. oh, uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Dimension. Close Encounters of the Fifth Dimension. It's worth a watch if you're interested in that kind of thing. Anyway, going back to all of this, where I'm going with this is just the flight pattern of Dragonfly is really something to consider when you are working with the uh, archetype, with the energy uh, with the lessons of um, the the eight of wands, because you you may need to zig when you might have gonna been zagging. And you know, y'all, when you own your own business, there there are any number of times during the day, no matter how great your business plan is. I, you know, if you're in your family and you're like, okay, the kids go to school, then I go to work, then I come pick them up, then we do this, then I go grocery shopping, then I go this. It takes one little thing to throw an entire day's perfectly planned, laid out schedule all the hell in a handbasket. So if you're the type where, you know, things throw you off, you know, if you step outside of your, you know, your pattern, Dragonfly is a really good energy to help that because there is something calling you right now to be open to zigging and zagging and going upside down and going this away and then just hovering when you need to hover. The other thing about it is this. People get really attached to names. People get really attached to labels. And that can be a great thing when you are working to manifest something, when you are setting an intention because your intention, you know, comes out so strongly with that word. 
But Dragonfly is a great call for you to say to the universe, I'm using this language as my intention, but I graciously accept anything else, any other name that you might give it that I may not know to ask for, or I may not be familiar with. And here's why I tell you. Lo and behold, Geek Girl uh, found facts today that I've never seen before about Dragonfly. Y'all know, I when I can't sleep at night, I, I I look up facts about animals. <laughs> I, I They just soothe me. And then I'm like, <sighs> you know, and so uh, I don't know why I've never seen this before, but did y'all know that dragonflies have like a billion to D different names, depending on what part of the country or what part of the world that they're in. And what's, what's weird about it is um, not, uh, not really complimentary ones by and large. Now, let me, let me tell you what I mean when I say that. So, um, Dragonflies are also known as devil's darning needle, darning needle, and sewing needle because they they fly back and forth and they look like little needles. And so, um, uh, like, in I think that's uh, I think that's according to Hawaiian uh, lore. And so they got that name. Oh no, excuse me, it's a northern term. Uh, let me just say, okay, uh, northern term. Darning needle is mostly used in the northeast uh, or northeast, inland, north, and west. And then Stitcher in California and Massachusetts, Sewing Needle in Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, so on and so forth. And um, they, uh, they're they also known, where else? I want to I want to tell you. Mental Floss, if you ever want to know. Uh, ear Cutter, Ear Sewer, Ear Needle, Ear, ear needle and Eye Stitcher, Schneider. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a Wisconsin moniker that comes from the German word for tailor. So we're back with that needle thing again. Uh, but here was something super interesting to me. So in Pennsylvania, they're known as snake servant, snake garter, and snake heater. Now that's going to flip some of you out because they're so, I mean, the fear of snakes is actually bigger for the American population than the fear of dying. Go figure. And, uh, but in the shamanic world, in the indigenous worlds, and in like, like nature healers worlds, snake medicine is big medicine. It's all about transformation and it's all about going to astral realms and it's shedding your skin and getting the new one and growth and this ancient, ancient, you know, primordial wisdom that comes, which is just, man. So, you know, things could be worse than dragonflies are the ones who protect the snakes, especially while they're going through transformation. Like, they could even be known as snake charmers, in, and, and, and they are, um, snake feeder in Midland and Plain states and snake charmer in uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Montana, and the Northeast. Okay, they're also known as the snake doctor. Um, they're known as the horse doctor, mosquito horse, horse stinger, mule killer, and bee butcher. Come on, y'all. Um, four eyes and helicopter and airplane and globe, skim globe skimmer. And then <laughs> in the Buckeye state in Ohio, um, they refer, they jokingly refer to them as long, uh, long ass uh, butterflies. So, which I thought was funny as heck. So anyway, um, what that got me to thinking is, you know, way, way back when dragonflies first got their names, it was very much thought that they, um, that they did have something to do, uh, with, um, like the devil something and the devil this, and I don't know how they got such a bad rap, but it actually could have come from the, uh, I want to say it's the Scottish word. I could be wrong because the, the, the Romanian interpretation is something having to do with devil, but then the Scottish interpretation is something having to do with the word, the root of it, drac, D-R-A-C, and that translates to dragon. And there's tons and tons of lore out there that dragonflies are thought to have descended from actual dragons and, and gotten smaller and, you know, became the beautiful things that they are today to be able to help mankind. And about a bajillion D more stories about them. Here's the point. The point is, Whatever this is that you're that you're wanting, whatever this is that you're manifesting, it's time to do it. It's time to make it fast. It's time to zig when you need to zig, zag when you need to zag, know when you need to zag, even if others are telling you to zig. And that nobody's name for it, nobody's label, it doesn't matter. What matters to you is what matters to you and to your dragonfly animal spirit guide. That's it. Those are the only two people's opinions you need to be concerned with. And dragonflies are known by a lot of different names here, there, and everywhere. And wasn't it just a couple weeks ago we were talking about the name doesn't matter, the name doesn't matter until it matters? Well, it only matters in that 
you, you may be asking for something, you may be manifesting something, and you're giving it one name, you're giving it one interpretation, when actually it, it could have a lot of different interpretations. So don't get so married to it's got to say this, especially I love this when people are out getting messages, right? They're, they're, they're running around the world and they're like, they'll, they'll pass, they'll pass a message and um, that spirit has just like laid out for them, just like a buffet and they'll pass it by because it doesn't say that exact thing. Um, I, I can't tell you how many people I've read for that. I, I've said, well, I see a, you know, I'm seeing a blue oval that has this, that has that, that has whatever, and I'm seeing it as a charm and something, something, nope, that's not it. And we go through the whole dance. And finally, what they'll tell me is, well, my father gave me a navy blue locket, but you said blue charm. And I'm like, it's not their fault. And I'm not, there's nobody's fault there and nobody's right and nobody's wrong. But what it does tell me uh, is that they were so intent on hearing what they thought their parent would tell them or their loved one or their pet or whatever, how they thought it should be or how they, how they had in their mind said, well, it has to be this way or I won't believe it, that they miss out on the beautiful moment that they get a message. So for instance, I'm wearing daisies today. I don't know why I was told to wear this, I guess, because I want, <laughs> I want a dragonfly to light on my heart chakra and light on one of these flowers. I don't know. I don't know. It just seemed like the shirt to wear, right? My little earrings. Okay. I don't know. Um, and there are all kinds of daisies in, in this card. And I, I, for me, for y'all, it's about the dragonfly and everything having to do with the dragonfly. For me this morning, it was about the daisies. Don't know why. I love dragonflies. Oh, we love dragonflies. But for me, it was about the daisies. So that would be the same as if um, I walked out and I saw dahlias and they were white with orange centers or yellow centers. And I was like, not a daisy. Or I walked out and I saw something else or I walk, you know, and I'm like, not a daisy, not a daisy, not a daisy. That would be my, op that would be my bad because I would miss that opportunity from spirit. And so you're being asked to not be so married to your labels, not be so married to what you think things should be and definitely not married to if it is not this, then it is not that. Remember that is not science. <laughs> I mean, well, that is science, right? But, but you know, in the scientific community, if this, then that, okay. Um, that's the math, but in, in the world of woo, it's not always like that. It can be very metaphorical. It can be very spiritual and it can be like crazy on the money. It, it can be all of those things and more hence the buffet, the spirituality buffet, the lesson buffet for today. Right. Okay. So, um, I hope that's helpful. Three more days, y'all, to my Kickstarter. Um, so pick up your copy of the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please get on over to gatheringandmystics.com. Join the free forums. It is buzzing over there. We are talking about all kinds of good stuff. People are learning, they're growing, they're making friends. I, it's my life. I love it. Um, anyway, all of that said, what's the most important thing? It's Monday. Start your week off with abundance. That's what we're talking about this week. And your dragonfly is going to help you get to abundance. But start your week off by doing good for animals and stay wild. Mm -hmm.